Hey fam, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So today I'm going to be discussing this book right here. Can you guys see this book title? Yes, Why Men Love Bees. I have to say that it took me a long time to even think about reviewing this book. Um, I know that it's an older title. I was just not interested because of the whole B word in the title. And I was just kind of over it. But I have to say, after many years of ducking and dodging this book, I'm glad that my coworker actually showed me the light. She said, you will love this book and you'll definitely want to review it on your channel. So I was like, you know what, let me go ahead and check out what she's talking about. And so I did just that. I checked it out and I have to say, Ladies and gentlemen, I love this book. It has so much information in it. Literally, I could talk about this book for hours. Hours, yes, but I will not bore you on it here. Um, if you are a nice girl and you want to be a little bit tougher, your standards, everything, I will have to say that she has a lot in this book. This book is by Sherry Argove. I think I'm pronouncing that right, Sherry Argove. And it is about 250 pages, very straight to the point. Nothing that you will not be able to understand. In here, she has these the things what they call um, attraction principles. Is that focusing? Yeah, attraction principles. And that's basically just to kind of summarize what she's actually talking about. And um, I want to read to you why she decided to, um, you know, give the book. Uh, actually, no, not why she decided to give the book this title. The person that she's talking about. So for the B word, she's not talking about the mean person. So she says, so why do men love bees? An important distinction should be made between the pejorative way the word is usually used and the way it is used here. Certainly, I'm not recommending that a woman have an abrasive disposition. The bee I'm talking about is not the bee on wheels or the mean-spirited character that Joan Collins played in Dynasty, nor is it the classic office bee that everybody hates at work. <laughs> the woman I'm describing here is kind yet strong. She has a strength that is very subtle. She doesn't give up her life and she won't chase a man. She won't let the man have or think that he has a 100% hold on her and she'll stand up when he steps out of line. Okay. She knows what she wants, but she won't compromise herself to get it. But she's also feminine, like a steel magnolia, where she's flowery on the outside, yet steel on the inside. She uses this very femin femininity to own her own, um, excuse me, to her own advantage. It isn't that she takes undue advantage of men because she plays fair. She has one thing that the nice girl doesn't. She has a presence of mind because she isn't swept away by the romantic fantasy. The presence of mind enables her to wield power when it is necessary. So just like that said, when it's necessary, she knows when she need to get you back in line, sir. She also has charts in here that I want to read to you a little bit. Or this one says, I'm not enough, which is sort of like what the nice girl says. And so she also says, um, the, 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 the B or the mean girl, whatever you want to call her, she says, I'm enough, take it or leave it. So the nice girl would say, she calls him often and she says, please return my call. But the B says, she'll get back to him when she's free. <laughs> the nice girl would say, she's on call like a Ricky flight attendant. But the B would say, she sees him when it's convenient for her. The nice girl she makes it obvious a relationship is her goal before she even knows much about him. So true. <laughs> the B. She goes out to have fun and doesn't, prom and doesn't make promises to a virtual stranger. The nice girl. When he does call her, she is mad that he didn't call her sooner. The B. When he calls her, he is curious where she is and why she's not available for him. The nice girl, she often drives to him. The mean girl, he'll pick her up and be happy and happily go out of his way for her. The nice girl, she asks, where's our relationship going? The mean girl, he has no clue where the relationship is going and she leaves it like that. So those are just some things that are in this book that I definitely want to point out because she she really is on point with this book. Like really, I, like I said, I really could talk about this book for hours. So another chart that I have for you is what he will say versus what he won't say. And I thought that this was very poignant. So I wanted to read to you here today. Okay, so what he won't say to you, but what he's thinking. 
I want sex and only sex with no strings attached. What he will say to you is, I'm interested in having a long-term relationship. <laughs> what he won't say, give me sex and I'll pretend to be your boyfriend for a week. What he will say is, trust me. <laughs> what he won't say, hey, can I rotate you with my three? <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought that was funny. Hey, can I rotate you with three other women? Like a pitching staff. What he will say is, you are so different. What he won't say, want to be my flavor of the month? What he will say, I am so tired of this dating scene. Honey, like I said, she got some really, really awesome things in this book. And I really just cannot wait for you to go ahead and pick it up. So the very last thing that I want to talk about is um, the top 15 signs that a woman is needy. And this is actually coming from the man's standpoint. All right. So these quotes are coming from actual men. When you as the lady are looking needy. I like a woman who's quiet at times because then you're not sure what she's thinking. She'll seem more secure with herself, like she has control over herself and her emotions. You want to be with a person who can think before she speaks. So that's what one guy said. The next guy is saying that I went out with a woman who interrogated me. I got the impression that she had been burned. Actually, it was more like she had been scorched. <laughs> No guy wants to feel like he's paying for some other guy's mistakes. And that is true, ladies out there. So if you have not dealt with your baggage, then um, yeah, no man wants to pay for what the other man did to you because lo and behold, all men are not the same. But if you think and feel like all men are the same, then guess what? You will attract the same type of guy. So relinquish and let go that statement that all men are the same because this is just not true. They're not all the same. That's just like putting all women in one box. We are not all the same. We like different things. We like to be hugged and, and caressed and treated differently, you know, within reason, right? But there's something about the treatment that you may like that I might not like. But you love it. That's what you're expecting. So just work on your mind. Work on your mindset, honey. The next man says that one woman I dated was really needy. She needed consistent reassurance about everything. Her family, her friends, and her job. During sex, she would say to me, do you know what happened to me today? That one killed my ego. Like, sis, stop it. <laughs> he in there trying to get his groove on, literally, trying to dig deep. And you talk about, so you know what happened to me today. That is a way to make it. And that is a way to make any man shrivel up and die in a corner. <laughs> you just killed the mood all the way. Definitely his ego. Like everything about him thinking that he getting it in for you. And that's the question you ask? Girl, you done. <laughs> the next man said, one woman tried to change me. She tried to get me to talk about my feelings more. Hey, look, I can deal with my own problems. <laughs> Another guy, when someone tries to get me to open up and I don't want to, there is nowhere they're going to get any information out of me. I'll close up even more. I don't need a woman to help me, in quotations. The next guy, I have one girlfriend who talks so much I could walk away in another room and she'd still be talking. Wow, you do, you do talk a lot. <laughs> one time I was in the bathroom trying to have some privacy and she was talking to me through the crack of the door. I was really thinking there must be something wrong with her. Now, I, I will say, at least for that one, it really depends on the stage of the relationship you guys are in because lo and behold, honey, me and hubby do that, but not in the crack, just the door be open. <laughs> it's the stage of the relationship. Now, I will say that some people don't never get to that stage, but me and my house, it ain't that serious. The door be open. The next guy. When a guy talks about something, it's over in 30 seconds. But for a woman, it goes on and on and on. What seems like a trivial thing to him seems like it's life threatening to her. So then you try to help her and you say, honey, it doesn't matter. But that makes it worse because she thinks you do not care. The final one that I will read says, I think a woman who talks less is more attractive because it makes her more mysterious. It is not a good thing to just ramble on. Communication should be about quality, not quantity. If a woman is uncomfortable or bothered, he should be able to feel it without her saying a word.
I mean, when I, when I say this book got so much, so many great things in it. I mean, really, like I said, I really could talk about this book on and on and on, but I will not do that. I will definitely say go and pick up this book if you have not read it by Sherry Argyle. Why Men Love Bees by Sherry Argyle. Seriously, you will not regret it. Even for the men, you can just see some of the things that they're saying, but um, especially for you people out there, men specifically, who like to read, this would actually be a good book. And even a conversation started that you can have with some of your guy friends, but um, you know, anywho, maybe that's a bit too much. Maybe, maybe I, took, I took it too far. Let me know if I took it too far down in the comment section below. But um, yes, at the end of the day, definitely go ahead and pick up this book. You will not read it you will love it again i know that it's an older book but it definitely this was a page turner for me and seriously two thumbs up from marshawn olanio so definitely go and pick this book up if you liked this video of course give me thumbs up share it with the people that you know need to hear it i will see you again in another video deuces